Okay, the next topic related to language modeling has to do with noisy channel models. So what is a noisy channel model? Why is it so important in natural language processing? Let's look at an example first. Suppose that we have a hypothetical system that takes as input written English, let's call that X, and then we have some sort of an encoder that randomly garbles the input, uh, converting it to Y, which is some sort of garbled English. So the output is now going to be what we call spoken English, or Y. And what does this garbling do? Well, it's just going to convert the original sequence of words in English as they are written into an audio signal that corresponds to the spoken English. Let's look at more examples. We can convert grammatical English X to English with grammatical mistakes, Y. We can convert English X to bitmaps or characters, that's Y. So in uh, the most general case, a noisy channel model is used uh, to determine the connection between a joint probability of two sequences as the product of the first sequence times the probability of the second one given the first one. So uh, we can think of it as a process of encoding and decoding. So given a foreign language string, we want to guess the English language version. So we assume that E was converted to F using an encoder that converts E to F. And then we want to build a decoder that converts F into E. And here I'm using this notation E uh, with an apostrophe to indicate that this is just our estimate of E. That doesn't mean that it's the original E, it's just our best guess as to what E is. How do we determine E? Well, E is going to be the value that maximizes the conditional probability of the English sentence given the foreign sentence, so the probability of E given F. And according to the previous uh, example in the Bayesian formula, we can write this as the expression E that maximizes the product of the conditional probability F given E times the probability of E. So what are those two? Well, P of F given E is a noisy channel model, also known as a translation model, and P of E is the language model. We already know what a language model looks like. It just takes a sequence of words in a given language, in this case in English, and it tells us how likely it is that that particular sequence is a valid sentence. Now we're going to introduce the translation model, which essentially tells us, given a certain sentence in English, what's the probability that this particular sentence in the foreign language corresponds to the sentence in English? So here's an example from French. We want to translate La Maison Blanche uh, from French into English. Uh, for those of you who don't know French, this just means the White House. So here are some possible, possible translations. The first one is, we're going to translate this as cat plays piano. Well, obviously, the probability that this foreign string, uh, La Maison Blanche, matches the English string cat plays piano is very low. We're going to put the minus in that box. What about the English language probability of cat plays piano? Again, this is not a valid sentence, so we're also going to get, give it a score of uh, a low score. The next one is a little bit better. We have, as a possible translation, house, white, the. Well, this is not a grammatical sentence, but at least it matches the right words in the French. So we're going to give it a positive score for the translation model and a negative score for the language model. Next one is a little bit better, the house, white. Again, it's not a grammatical sentence in English, but it matches the words in French. So we're going to give it the same set of scores as the previous example. Now let's look at two other examples. The red house. Well, the red house is a valid sequence of words in English, but in uh, French this doesn't match because the word red doesn't match any of the words in the original sentence in French. The small cat is also a valid English sentence, but it's not anything that matches the French words. So we're going to give both of those examples a negative score for the translation mode. And finally, the sequence the white house is going to have, obviously, uh, high scores on both of those features. It's going to have a high language modeling probability because it's a valid noun phrase in English, and it's going to have a high translation score because it has the same words as the original French sentence. So the idea of uh, translation models like this is to come up with all the possible sequences of words in English of the right length, and to try to figure out based on the two probabilities in the two columns, which one is the best translation of the original sentence. So the good translation is going to have a high score on the language model and also a high score on the translation model. And if there are many uh, phrases that have high scores on both of those, we're just going to multiply those two probabilities and pick the one that has the highest product. 
So what are some possible uses of the noisy channel model? Well, we mentioned machine translation, but there are many others. For example, they, it can be used in handwriting recognition. In handwriting recognition, the input is going to be a bitmap of what you wrote, and the output is going to be an English sentence. It can also be used in text generation, in text summarization, in machine translation, and in spelling correction. So for example, spelling correction, we can use it to model the probability that a certain type of mistake is going to be made. And we have a separate lecture on edit distance and text similarity that is uh, going to talk about this problem. So here's a, an example uh, of spelling correction. Uh, this example comes from Peter Norvig. Uh, the idea here is that we have a word to, T-H-E-W, that was clearly a mistake. There's no such word in English. And we want to predict which of the candidate words in the second column are the most likely substitutions. So the first one is the word the. The next one is uh, to leave the word alone. Uh, the third one is to replace the E with an A and get the word tho. The next one is to insert an R, so we would have the word through. And finally, we have a replacement that swaps to adjacent letters and get another nonsensical word, T-H-W-E. So now we need to figure out uh, what are the conditions that make those uh, substitutions possible. So in the first example, we are looking at the probability that we're going to replace E-W with E. So the probability of this is uh, very small, but the probability of C is very large. Why do we get those numbers? Well, it's very unlikely that we're going to uh, insert a W in the middle of a word, but the word the is grammatical English, so it's going to have a very high score on P of C. The next one is uh, two, T-H-E-W. It gets a very high probability in the first column because it just means that no typo was made. However, the probability that this is a valid word in English is very, very small. The third example, we have, again, different numbers. Uh, the probability that this, this mistake is going to happen uh, replacing the E with an A has a probability of one in a thousand. And then the probability that tho is an actual English word is relatively high because it is a real English word. And so on, we can add the missing values in the other cells of the table. And then in the last column, we can multiply the two probabilities, the translation model probability with the language model probability. And here for a clarity, we're also going to multiply them with the, the billion. So we're going to have uh, numbers that are around one. So in this case, the first suggested spelling correction is going to be to replace T-H-E-W with the. It's going to have a score of 144. The second alternative is to keep it as it is with a score of 90. And then we have three more uh, substitutions that are possible but have much lower probabilities. So the scores are uh, respectively 0 0.7, 0 0.03, and 1 in 10,000. So if you're interested in more detail about this, you can look at uh, Peter Norvig's uh, section on n-grams and his book at this URL. So this concludes the section on uh, noisy language models. And we're going to continue now with the next topic on part of speech tagging.